The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Carson Newman is picked six in the SAC preseason poll. Coach Tom Griffin's favorite time of the year as we get set for the 2020 season. I know the preseason poll just means so much to you, but I'll ask a question in a different way because every team is vying for a top four spot. That way they get automatically into the double elimination and don't have to play on that Thursday. So for your team to finish in the top four this season, what needs to happen? Well, it's good to see you here at the start of the year, and the weather's been really good for us, obviously, to get out and start training. To, to finish in the top four uh, for this club is probably more, like most clubs, it's the mental aspect. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the thing we've talked about uh, since the uh, beginning of the fall was uh, the upperclassmen, your leaders on the club, um, the mental aspect of how we're going to handle things on and off the field, whether it's the, the things of responsibility off the field and uh, on the field, handling adversity, uh, how we're going to handle successes, um, how we're going to play with confidence. Um, I think that's a big part of what this team is. There's a lot of other things you got to look at as well as, as far as your pitching, defense, and offense. But for us, I think if we take care of that mental aspect of things, it gives us a chance to compete every game. Let's look at your lineup for a second. You lose some critical pieces in John Sharp and Ethan Goforth, all conference guys, two players that really got hot and helped the lineup last season, but you return a ton. Three preseason all-conference picks out there. Tyler Thompson's the team's – are the conference's – reigning batting champion mm -hmm. what do you see from your lineup top to bottom as you enter this year with just a couple new faces needed yeah it's it's tough to lose you know those two guys because um they had played a lot they had a lot of experience and and with ethan behind the dish obviously he was also uh able to control our pitching staff and had done that for a couple years so now we have a new guy back there behind the dish um, there's several guys vying for that position. I think that's going to be a spot that we kind of play more than one guy in which we didn't do obviously with Ethan. He played pretty much every game. Offensively, we've got some depth, uh, in the outfield, first base. Um, we've got some depth. We got some guys we can use as pinch hitters. Um, the question mark we're looking for right now is, is solidifying some depth in, the, depth in the infield. Second base right now is, uh, is a position that's up for grabs with several guys. Um, Pitching-wise, um, you know, that's where we're going to have a lot of new faces. Guys that have not pitched before are going to have to come in and uh, see what they can do because we don't have a lot of experience in our, in our bullpen. I think we have experience with our starting guys, but the bullpen lacks uh, experiences. So, you know, each game they go out there, mm -hmm. they're going to be uh, learning what they can or can't do. It's one thing to do it in a bullpen, mm -hmm. but there's another when you're doing it against somebody else. And you never know how kids are going to react to that until they're actually put out there. The more times we can get them out there to get their feet wet, the better I think it helps us in the long run. You mentioned the pitching staff. Well, this will be the first year where you don't have Greg Valentine – at least on the pitching staff last year's starter, but obviously in the bullpen those yeah. first three seasons. But not just him, because you had Austin Connor who pitched a lot. You had Ryan mm -hmm. Victory that pitched a lot for this team in their time. What will it take for one of these guys that you currently have to step up and fill that void? I really think it's can we get them out there enough. Early in the season, we've got to be able to give them opportunities uh, to throw for us. So, you know, as a coach, you're, you're managing a game, and, and what you got to do sometimes, you've got to say, okay, you're going to try to win this game, or do you try to get gay guys' experience? Mm -hmm. You know, you could think, like, oh, we can just finish the game right now. Well, we got a guy in the bullpen who hasn't thrown much. Let, let's get him out there. Let's let him get his feet, let him get an inning in here. And sometimes that can backfire because it's a new guy and he's trying to figure things out. But that's the only way they can gain experience. Uh, we have to get them out there early. So I think Coach Miller, um, in, in a, uh, I'm sorry, Coach Brown, Pat Brown, will have to uh, figure out, okay, how are we going to utilize these guys as best as possible? Also, when you're training them, I think you also have to make sure that when you're training them that it's as game-like as it can be. It's never going to match the intensity but I think what we do in our in our training has got to be like, hey, guys, this is as close as it can be without out actually playing someone right now. You go to Limestone to start the season, four games set there. Then you go to Belmont Abbey, five road games to start the season. So that's a little bit of adversity to start the year. What does this team need to be able to utilize during these final remaining practice sessions to make sure that you are ready 
four game activities and you take advantage of how the season starts. And that's what the, each day the staff, we sit down and, and we've got things kind of mapped out in a way of mm-hmm. these are the things we have to cover. What happens mostly in a game? Um, you can spend time doing first third def- defense, but it doesn't happen very often. So you got to you limit what you do with that. But some of the other parts of the game are really important. The more you can give them live game like situations with a pitcher on the mound throwing live, I think that's big. But I also believe in the fundamentals, and you've got to just work on the fundamentals and the drill work and the individual defensive work as well. So I think right now you're trying to do everything like you would in the, in the season, where you're going to have three, maybe four dates that you're actually going to scrimmage and the other days basically you're going to train when you're doing your scrimmaging you're trying to make sure that you're doing the training during that as well so that's really what we're trying to do because most of it's again we're trying to work on that mental aspect you know to try to get them to handle everything they have to handle schedule wise who we have to play I mean there's nothing we can do about them Mm -hmm. all we can do is what we can do and 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 really it's such a cliche we say we say it every year but I I don't know anything about anybody. Like this whole ranking system. I don't know who got guys in at the portal. Mm-hmm. Some guys could have got three Division One pitchers, and all of a sudden we know nothing about them, but yet we're going to decide, okay, where are we going to rank these guys? So all we need to do is take last year's rankings and just, just continue. However they finished last year, just move it to this year. Because I don't know what anybody's got. And so um, I can't worry about what they're doing or how they're doing or – what we can do is what we got, man. You know, um, you can game plan a little bit with some scouting reports, but on, I think mostly on this level, you don't know what you're going to get from day to day from certain guys yeah. as well. You know, we see things that you can pitch a guy a certain way. Mm-hmm. Well, we get a scouting report. Well, their pitchers are probably throwing. They could be throwing it harder than our guys, right? <laughs> and they're saying, well, he can't hit a fastball. Well, he can't hit your guy's fastball because right. you got guys throwing 88, 92. We got guys throwing 83, 85. So, you know, he hits fa- our fastball is good. So, you know, you got to just go into each game, do what you do best, be the best version of yourself, and then uh, see what happens. Coach, appreciate the time. Looking forward to 2020. Look forward to it as well. Thank you, brother. East Carson Newman, Coach Tom Griffin. I'm Michael Watching, and this is the Eagle Sports Network.